The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. It's time for the Jets to make a splash, and they are considering the biggest splash of all. Knoble to the Jets at 10. We'll ask Cole Thompson about that. Plus, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. Can Douglas trade up for one of the wide receivers? We'll get into that as well at our final seven-round mock draft. It's the Jake Asman Show. Let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Aaron freaking Rodgers. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go, Jets fans. Hit the like button. Welcome in. We are less than a week to go until the NFL draft gets underway as we will be live in Vegas. And one of our esteemed guests as part of our mega cast all weekend long is a guy who joins us every Friday during the offseason. Ladies and gentlemen, Cole Thompson. Hello, Cole. What up? Sorry about that, guys. I had to put on my makeup and say hi to Dr. Evil. How we doing? How's everybody <laughs> good, good. doing today? Well, good to get you back on the show. Obviously, I know you've been really studying the film on Knobel since Lane Train discovered him. So after you know watching the film, and obviously we got the testing scores this morning from Matt O'Leary, your thoughts on Knobel as a prospect? Is he worthy of a top 10 pick like a lot of people think he now is? <sighs> okay, so I am very, very ashamed that I did not know enough about Knobel when he first came onto the scene. It was kind of embarrassing, you know, you hear about these small school prospects and you don't really go into too much detail with them. But the main thing that I realized when watching him at college university, the way his versatility stood out. I mean, this is a kid that is five foot seven, but he plays like he's six foot three. The major point that I love about his game is that he's a Swiss army knife. I mean, they lined him up 225 snaps defensively at linebacker. They lined him up at another 175 snaps in the nickel. He played 215 snaps at safety, lined up 322 times in the slot, 419 times on the outside. He does everything that you want. And he even played a little bit of running back, which is kind of embarrassing when you think about what college university has with Damian Brown, who is averaging 6.2 yards per play. But sometimes you want to spice it up a little bit. This is a guy that has all the attributes of what you're looking for in a premier prospect. The only thing that I think that you look at right now is his size. I mean, would we not be talking about him with that RAS score somewhere in the top five picks without question? So long as he was five foot 10, five foot 11, that's the main element here. You look at his weight, you look at his frame, you look at his bench reps, 33 reps. I understand that people are going to take that and say, well, he's got small arms, but he's got a big heart. He has the ability to change games. I don't know where he lands though. How do you feel about him as a first round pick? Do you think that he is going to be somebody that comes in right away and makes an impact for this team? I could see it. I understand it. I love his tape. I just think right now you have to look at everything else that you have right now. But to me, it's a, it's a home run pick. And I am hearing from very reliable sources, New York is interested, but it's the other New York team. So you may have to jump in front of the Giants at pick number six. They are really interested in going ahead and bringing him on in. Well, there you have it, folks. I promised you a draft expert would break down Knobel and Cole Thompson coming through on that. All right. As far as other prospects go, Cole, a lot of rumblings after Joe Douglas's press conference earlier today that the Jets could consider trading up 
trading down. Douglas not going to tip his hand, but for those who missed it, let's play you the comments from JD and Cole will get your thoughts on what it will potentially take to move up in the draft. Here's Douglas talking about the process of trading up as well as trading down. No, those are the questions we're asking ourselves. Okay, who are who are those guys? Uh, would, would, would you trade up? Who are those guys? How comfortable are you are? Uh, how comfortable are you moving up to get those players? So those are all the discussions that we're having right now. We're going to have more strategy meetings next week on, okay, who who are those players that we would consider coming up from ten to, to go get? How many of them are they? How far are you willing to go? Um, obviously, we don't have our full complement. We don't have a second round pick this year, so uh, that lim- that limits you a little bit on how just how far you can go up. But um, those are the conversations we have. And then on the flip side, we get to ten and we have um, a strong group of players that we love. How how willing are you to to move back? How much? How far do you feel comfortable moving back? So those are all the conversations that we're having um, yesterday and all next week. All right. So I find it interesting because if you project the top of the drive, Cole, I think there's an avenue for one of the big three receivers to make it to, say, seven or eight. Yeah. Daniel Jeremiah threw out the suggestion of, hey, the Jets call up Atlanta. They offer their third-round pick this year. Atlanta gives you their fourth-round pick, so it's a pick swap. Atlanta only has to move back two spots from eight to ten. They still get the defensive player they're targeting, one of the best defensive players, maybe the best defensive player, first one off the board. They're targeting at ten. And then the Jets are in range to get either a Dunze or Neighbors, whichever one makes it. Just your thoughts after you hear that from Douglas on the possibility of moving up for one of the weapons. I feel like you got to do it if you are Joe Douglas because of what's the point of waiting around? I mean, again, you need to be aggressive. This is the last straw for him. He is on about as thin ice as humanly possible. And that's not just because he's a big guy that could fall through. It's because of he has big hopes to live up to this year. You have the quarterback. You went out, you spent a little bit of money when it came to free agency and offensive line, when it came to wide receiver. Now you want to go ahead and fortify your offense as much as humanly possible. This is a top five defense. Do you really want to waste it once again because of an anemic play that you're not going to have inside the red zone? Because if you're not going to have that game changer who could be here well past 2024. And the other thing is that Aaron Rodgers, how much longer do you got with him? Like every single year, I I get it. You're excited to have him back, but you got to remember, This was a quarterback that for three straight off seasons would flirt around with the inclination of, will I be back in Green Bay? Won't I be back in Green Bay? It was always always a ploy. He just wanted to have the attention, but that's not the point. The point is that now he's 40. Now he's coming off of 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 a major Achilles injury, and you may be hitting a little bit of a snag next season if you don't land your quarterback. So what's the best way to guarantee that regardless of who is going to be in the running next year to be your starter, have stable weapons on the outside? I feel like that the asking price has got to be worth moving up for. But at the same time, if there is a player that you just are absolutely in love with, whether it be a six foot three wizard in the open field like Roma Dunze, whether it be a huge highlight playmaker like Malik Neighbors, go get him. And there is a scenario where I do think that you could target an offensive lineman if you really want to. But I feel like if you're moving up, you probably have to go get that guy who is going to be a game changer on the outside. It's not going to be internal. It's not going to be an offensive tackle. It's not going to be a guard. It's going to be somebody that can be a playmaker, put butts in the stands, and also take a little bit of pressure off of Garrett Wilson. Your thoughts on the cost of potentially moving up even higher than that is, if I tell you the Jets could get Marvin Harrison Jr., but they got to trade next year's one. Would you do it? No, I wouldn't. I, I I wouldn't, but at the same time, I'm not Joe Douglas. I don't really care. That's kind of the thing. I don't really care if I'm Joe Douglas. I don't have any wiggle room anymore. I can't mess up anymore. I have to nail this pick, and I have to be a team that is competing not only for a playoff spot, but I also have to be a team that's competing for a Super Bowl. Like That's what the Jets have. Imagine this team last year with that defense and having a healthy Aaron Rodgers with Brees Hall with Garrett Wilson, with a wide receiver in Alan Lazard that does have a that does have a relationship with Aaron Rodgers. Imagine what this team could be. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But Joe Douglas, he has no more cards to play. You might as well just push your chips in the pile and hope to God that you end up hitting on black. Like that's what you're really banking on at this point. All right. Breaking down some of the weapons here. Brock Bowers. No. Or no. Any of the big three. You're taking the big three, correct? Yes, 100%. Okay. All right. Uh, good. I want to I want to establish. Just no, where, I'm not. Th- th- where th- you th- rank th- them? 
stop like 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 all i've heard today on wfan all i've heard for the last couple couple of weeks on wfan brock bowers is the guy no he's not no he is not you hear legitimate people who are in the new york media talk about this like they don't understand how this actually is supposed to be a tight end regardless of the type of player is a luxury pick you do not have the ability to afford luxury. And even though Canoble would be an exceptional fit for this team, that also is kind of a luxury pick because you don't know where he fits. I feel like you know where you fit with the Marvin Harrison, where you fit with the Roma Dunze, where you fit with the Malik Neighbors. They're all complementary pieces. That, to me, is exactly what you need to add in. I'm sorry, plain and simple. Brock Bowers or Brian Thomas Jr.? Brian Thomas Jr. I'm taking, uh, I'm sorry, and at that point, I'm... That's I'm what I'm asking down. about. Yeah, well, I'm okay. Well, I'm thinking you can't trade down, but you want a weapon. Would you take Brock Bowers or Brian Thomas Jr.? Or is, is Brian, where do you have uh, he's wide the other receivers? receivers? So, so he's wide who's, receiver five. Who's uh, four? Adonai Mitchell, uh, Texas. Okay, so Brock Bowers versus Adonai Mitchell. I would take Mitchell, personally. I really would. I feel like that having that red zone capability with a guy who's six foot four and proved last year he could be a number one wide receiver while splitting reps opposite of a vertical speedster, that to me is something that I can't teach and it's something that I need for this locker room. But I do think that right now when you are looking at a guy like Brian Thomas Jr., his route tree is a little bit limited. So maybe I would lean Brock Bowers at that point. I get it. There is a little bit of potential with him as a blocker. I went back and I watched the film. His blocking isn't great, but it can be improved upon. I do think that right now, though, I probably will go with a guy like that. I would go with a guy like Bowers over over uh, Thomas. That was the question. It's like, a, what what's the line of delineation for you where like Bowers then leapfrogs one of the receivers as far as a weapon? Yeah, plain and simple. I mean, to me, okay, Brian Thomas. I, and I, I saw, already saw in the comments section, Brian Thomas over so-and-so. Brian Thomas has three routes. He has go, he has slant, he has, uh, he has a comeback. That's it. That's all he was asked to do when he was in LSU's offense. So you're not getting a seasoned route runner. He's a guy that's going to be very limited. In fact, the way that I compare him to is a player like Alec Pierce. He can be a home run threat. But if you're going to go for a home run threat, you might as well trade down and just get Xavier Worthy at that point. To me, who has a much more seasoned route tree. That's really the difference between these two. One's six foot three, one's five foot eleven. One has incredible speed. One has very good straight line speed. I just think at this point, if you're going straight at 10, Bowers would make more sense than Thomas, but I would take Adam Mitchell over, over Brock Bowers. All right, let's talk about the offensive line scenarios now. Jets are there at 10. Joe Alt is not on the board. Give me your best offensive lineman in that scenario you would take. I, the, my number one offensive lineman at that point would be Talisi Fuaga. It would be Talisi Fuaga out of Oregon State. I feel like that he is somebody that can come in right away and be a great run blocker. But I think for this offense, Troy Fontanu has to be the pick. That is why I really do think that if you're going to go stay at 10, I've gotten around to it. Connor Rogers has talked about it for a little bit. For a little bit, You've seen other draft analysts start bringing it up. I just feel like that flexibility on the offensive line that allows you to have competitions throughout camp. Maybe he plays guard. Maybe he plays right tackle. Maybe he plays left tackle. That, to me, just opens up the avenues for you to feel confident in a starting five that's going to keep Aaron Rodgers upright. So... I like Fuaga a lot, but I feel like at this point, Fatanu may be the better selection simply because of what he brings to the variety of what this offensive line could be. Jets trade down, Cole, and let's say the next wave of tackles are all there. Let's say they're moving back five to seven spots. Which offensive lineman do you think would make the most sense in that scenario? Can I still get Fatanu? Let's say he's off the board because I think he would make sense at 10 and then obviously in a trade down. I would probably go with Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. I really do like his footwork. I think that he's got good arm strength. I think he's got some good flexibility to him. And he's not going to be a guy that you have to start right away. I get the conversation with Amarius Mims. Kind of that would fall in line too. Because if he's a guy that only played eight games during his tenure at, or at, at Georgia. So he is going to be a little bit of a product. But the only reason why I would probably lean Guyton. Let's just go ahead and look at what is Tyron Smith. He's an all-pro tackle when he's on the field, when he's on the field. And last season, he was able to stay healthy. But how trustworthy do you believe he's going to stay healthy for a full 17-game stretch? If you were to have to make a play and put in a rookie at left tackle or move someone over to right tackle, uh, left tackle, and then play him at right tackle, 
I want somebody with at least a little bit more experience. Tyler Guyton's got experience on both the right side and the left side of the offensive line. He's very good in run blocking. To me, that opens up a lot more avenues, especially if you can move down to, say, pick 18, maybe be able to go get yourself a second-round pick in the process. That makes like a win-win situation for all involved. You heard it there from Cole. Keep submitting comments and questions for him to answer. All right, let's say the Jets traded back Cole, and they're trading back to take a weapon. If they took Brian Thomas Jr., at what number would you be like, that's good value? You didn't like it at 10, but I think there's a chance they trade back for a weapon. What number would you feel comfortable with Brian Thomas, Adonai Mitchell, and then kind of give us a rundown on some of the other guys that you think are first-round talent at the receiver spot? All right, so if we're going to go with Adonai Mitchell, anywhere between 15 and 18 would make a lot of sense. I feel like that having that red zone target, a guy who has surefire hands, is a very reliable weapon in the open field. That's probably where you're looking at him. People are already talking about him potentially landing with Jacksonville, landing with Indianapolis, landing with maybe you could even say Cincinnati because of that's really where they're going to be having wide receiver conversations. I feel good there. I feel like in the 19 to 21 range, this may be where you want to go ahead and target a Brian Thomas Jr. Like, let's just say for all fun that Los Angeles wants to move up to 10 to take Brock Bowers. And they give you a second round pick and they give you a 2022, a 2025 second round pick. Well, now you're getting a proven wide receiver that has played the complimentary role, but also you're getting another playmaker and you're getting two extra draft picks in the process with it. So I feel good there. Let's just say that they were to move all the way down and get a future number one pick or they get two first round picks or, you know, a, a one, a three and a 2025 20, second. That's where I target Xavier Worthy. I think Worthy at that point falls into that 22 to 28 range. Buffalo, I think, is going to be really interested in him. If for some reason Arizona were to miss out on Marvin Harrison by trading down, I could see an area where they were to target maybe Xavier Worthy at 27. So that's kind of the range of where you're looking at the wide receivers. And at that point, I just want to be able to have a second round pick. That way I can target an offensive lineman there. And then I could target a wide receiver in the third round with one of my two picks. Offensive linemen that aren't first round guys that you think are going to end up being really good players. Give us a breakdown on a couple. Um, I think Jordan Mahogany out of Boston College is going to be really, really good. Uh, 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 Just Mahogany, my bad. Uh, he's a really into good, stout interior offensive lineman. Does a great job in run blocking. I feel like that he is going to provide exceptional value for a team. Zach Frazier, the center out of West Virginia, is starting to get a little bit of buzz when it comes to the first round. I think that he is a mauler in the trenches. The reason why West Virginia was so good last year was their ability to protect quarterback Garrett Green. So, now that you have a guy up the middle, he could probably fill in a lot of gaps, but he is, in my opinion, a center only. He is not going to be able to translate, I think, over to guard as well as other players are. I think Jordan Morgan out of Arizona is a really interesting player. In three years at uh, in Tucson, he allowed 11, tack I mean, 11 sacks. I think it was 18 quarterback hits. He was able to keep Noah Fafita upright, and the offensive line really was the staple and the bread and butter for the Wildcats this past year. He's another name that probably is going to be somewhere in that line of late day one, early day two. I think he is probably going to be somebody who comes in right away and earns a starting rep, whether it be at guard, whether it be at tackle, whether it be uh, as a swing guy. I really like his overall footwork. I like his frame. This is somebody who I think can make it work. Graham Barton is the last guy I want to bring up from Duke. Uh, he is just a playmaker, and, and he's versatile as all hell. They're trying him out at center. They're working extremely well at guard. He has some reps at tackle. I think he's going to be an interior offensive lineman, probably somebody that I think people would fall in love with at the end of day one, early day two. And then let's go with straight day two, guys. This is one of my biggest draft crushes, and he has been for a while. Cooper Beebe out of Kansas State. This is mm -hmm. somebody who I think is going to come in right away and be able just to maul over people. I, I mean, the way that you watched him play in 2022, he played three different positions on that offensive line and was somebody that was able to lead this team to a Big 12 title. I love what you're going to be able to get in Cooper Beebe. He's probably a third-round pick. 
Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Shout out to all the Asmaniacs out there. Make sure you like the video so you got a chance to get a membership during the show. And I want to give some love to our Patreon members. Support the show away from YouTube and gain access to the Discord. You get the show in podcast form on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Bonus shows and a whole lot more. Patreon.com slash Jake Desmond Show. Shout out to Dave who signed up for the year earlier today on Patreon. Dave signed up using Euros, so he's not in the U.S. because I, I don't know. But thank you, Dave. Alexander Levine and Jets After Hours, our three most recent Patreon subscribers. Shout out to everyone who's tuned in, and we appreciate Cole for always coming on with us every Friday during the offseason, and he'll be a part of our mega cast next week weighing in on the Jets moves in the draft. A couple super chats to start us off. Abram O'Brien writes in, is there a scenario where JD says F them 2025 picks and we take both a big three receiver and a top tackle this year? Well, I think what's difficult, Abram, is the Jets don't have a second round pick this year. So it's not like they could take a big three receiver, maybe one falls to them at 10 and they don't have to trade any capital and then get back into the first round. It's going to be hard to do that without a second round pick this year, even if you're willing to use next year's capital. So, Cole, you know the draft a lot more than I do. Is there a scenario where somehow they could pull that off? Because it's tough for me to picture it right now. Yeah, but at the same time, you also have to wonder what's going to be the asking price to move up. Like, are you going to have to give up a first round pick in next year's draft to be able to land somebody at the end of round one? And also... I feel like that you're going to have to go and land somebody at the end of round one because nobody is going to want to trade with a team that probably feels like, yeah, maybe a play, like maybe a good playoff team. They get to the divisional round. If they're lucky, they make it to the Super Bowl. So you got to realize that that pick is not going to be a high premier draft selection. So, like, let's just say Arizona, Monty Asafort loves trading out. Let's say he wants to get more draft capital past this year because he realizes this is a three year window for us to be building our roster to where we know we can be successful. How do you feel like that it's going to pan out when you're picking at 27 this year, but then next year you'd be picking at 28, 29. And how do you feel about the draft class going into next year? Do you feel confident at the wide receiver? Do you feel confident at the offensive line? I, I just don't see a scenario where unless you're willing to move out of the top 10, like maybe you get down to 18, you get a second round pick, and then you use that second round pick to get up at the end of the first round and get a guy like a Jordan Morgan, get a guy like a Graham Barton. You're probably not going to be able to walk away with at least one or two people in this first round. I, I just, there, there's not a scenario because you don't have the capital. This is why I love this channel. So Bob comments, I heard rumors they were thinking about changing the Heisman to the Knoble. And then George writes in, Jake is turning the show into something different that we have known to expect. Stop the Kenobo crap if you can. You're losing followers, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. George, totally, George. Yeah, George, totally. Uh, this month is about to be my highest uh, viewed month that we've had since last November. So I would say, George, Kenobo is actually helping us because who wouldn't want to talk about one of the most dynamic prospects the world has ever seen? So I appreciate the suggestion, George, but I can promise you, uh, Kenobo's here to stay. You, unfortunately, my friend, are not. Just shut the fuck up. I did not ask for the damn opinion that came out of your ass. So shut the fuck up. Bye. 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 And By the way, yeah, uh, Kenobo is not a luxury. He's our only hope. Yeah, he, okay. He is a luxury, though. I'm sorry. He is a luxury. It's a luxury that you want. It's one that I think would benefit you. I mean, he can play both sides of the ball, Cole. He fills in anywhere you need him to. Yeah, but at the same time, Jake, do you feel like that you could throw him in a tackle? Do you feel like that you could throw him in anywhere else? I mean, I'm sorry. Where? Like, I mean, like, Cole, he's 5'7", but he plays like he's 6'7". He could play yeah, tackle. Yeah, okay, well, he does not play like he's 6'7". He plays like he's 6'3". Please get it right if you want to actually go ahead and enjoy this. Now, the thing with Kenobo, I saw this earlier in the comment section, uh, his three prior arrest records. Do your research, people. Number one was a public intoxication when he was 19 years old. We've all done stupid things at 19. The other one, he was arrested for being a part of a situation that he got cl that it was cleaned off his record. And the third one, he was speeding while driving. Look, this is not Athens, Georgia. It was a minor mistake. He was driving with an expired license. You got to be able to make sure that you do your research. Plus, he ran a 4-3-3-40. At that point, you know he's going to be fine. Also, check the source why it's leaking out now. There's so many teams trying to basically, you know, d diminish his value. So he falls to them in the draft. 
Of course he did. L- listen, Laramie Tunsil falling on draft night to Miami was the biggest blessing of all for him because of guess what? He was able to get paid a, an abundance amount of money. And then also he was part of that massive trade that landed Tyree Kill and Jaden, I mean, and, and uh, uh, Jalen Waddle. Like sometimes moving down the draft board, not the worst thing. Sometimes actually a big blessing for you. Well said. Well said. More super chats to get to. We'll mix in some calls as well as the final Cole Thompson Friday oh, for hey, the hey, NFL draft. Jake, out of curiosity, real fast. Uh, there is a sweet person by the name of uh, Talkin Burks. Um, can we send him to the shadow realm by chance? Because I'm apparently, I'm apparently well, a brutal listen, so we don't need him to listen anymore today. Oh, th- that guy's been trying to give me. You want to hear this guy's th- uh, thing that he's mad at me about? Yeah, let's hear. It. Let's hear it. Let's hear it, Taylor. Come on, what's up, buddy? Well, first, let's put him in the in stupid town. We'll get Thank rid of you. him. Just shut the f- up. I did not ask for the dumb opinion that came out of your ass. So shut the f- up. Bye bye. So he got mad at me because I said I don't want Brock Bowers because look what Kyle Pitts was overhyped, generational, same things they're saying about Bowers. They took him number four overall, and then two picks later, Jamar Chase is one of the best, if not the best, wide receivers in the league. I just don't believe in taking a tight end that high. And he said, you have no idea what you're talking about. Bowers is not like Pitts at all. I'm like, maybe their playing style is a little different, but the same conversation three years ago about Pitts, we're having about Brock Bowers right now. The generational, type in Kyle Pitts generational in Google and go read the amount of articles that use the term generational with him. I don't need to. I know what the comments were. I didn't think he was generational at the time. I didn't think he was generational now. I I'm just, what, I'm, I'm yelling at that guy, not yeah, you. No, no, no. But like, but again, you and I have had this conversation. Yeah, I three actually, years ago. Yeah, yeah, but I believe that Brock Bowers is that difference maker at tight end. That doesn't mean I'm going to take him in the top 10. It's position flexibility. Like, you don't see safeties go in the first round in the top 10 anymore. I wonder why, Jets fans. You probably have a good explanation for that. It's the same thing with tight ends. Like, they're a luxury pick at this point. Look, You're not it, taking it, one there. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry, oh, Sal, that you are enjoying it. Power <laughs> boy. Oh, they're everywhere, Cole. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Johnny P's got a quick $2 super chat. I want to address real quick. Is the circuit thing an event or just you streaming? Uh, it, it's kind of both. I mean, it's not like a formal event. We're going to be live in the sports book at one of the boots there broadcasting our show, but all jet fans who are in Vegas, you're more than welcome to stop by, hang out and watch the draft with us. I'll be live working, but you know, you, you're more than welcome to come hang. Gator's going to be there. A couple of the other as maniacs who are either in town for something or live out there. You're going to be joining us. So it's going to be fun. Come hang out. You should. Uh, JYB says, Cole and Jake, when was the last time a prospect was heavily talked about and actually drafted by that team? Seems like a smokescreen with Bowers. Jamar Chase. Well, okay, but ignoring quarterbacks, like Saquon at number two was telegraphed by Dave Gettleman that year. There, there, there are some examples. I don't buy the, the idea that the Jets are like dead set on Bowers, like all the mock drafts have you to believe. I think they're trying to put it out there that they are, essentially, because of what happened last year where they got basically intercepted by Pittsburgh getting Broderick Jones when the Jets could have used another lineman. So I think the Jets like the fact that everyone seemingly thinks they're going to take Bowers. I don't expect them to take Bowers when push comes to shove. Now, I fully acknowledge I'm trying to manifest them not taking Brock at 10. So maybe that's part of my thinking. But I don't think they're going to end up taking him at 10. I mean, I was manifesting you guys taking Sauce Gardner at pick number four, and it worked out. We can manifest making sure that Brock Bowers doesn't go top 10. I mean, like, that's just the way. But Jamar Chase was one. Like, I remember hearing at the Combine, everything that people were talking about was Joe Burrow does not care about the offensive line right now. They can go ahead. He can move outside the pocket. He's okay with being coming off the torn ACL. He wants his number one wide receiver. I started writing in permanent ink in March that they were going to take Jamar Chase at pick number five. And they did. Like sometimes you see it happen, but it is very rare. Uh, it, it is. And also part of the reason it's so rare is because everyone else is having these kind of conversations behind closed doors. And you think that you're going to get a guy. Like I'll remember uh, Andre Dillard was supposed to go to the Texans. Like everybody in Houston was so high on Andre Dillard coming out of Washington State. And Philly jumped Houston one spot just to be able to go get him because they knew he was going to be the pick. So they immediately pivoted over to uh, pivoted over to Titus Howard. So like sometimes that's the way it happens. You think you know something, and then somebody else is doing behind closed doors, not having conversations, not letting anything leak, and then it happens. 
Gary writes in, if we draft Bowers, we will probably win the Super Bowl. Did somebody say Brock Bowers? <laughs> Gary, we'll see you later. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. That's the problem. Joe writes in, hi, Cole. Who do you see in the later rounds at wide receiver that could be a sneaky sleeper? As a playmaker. So, by the way, we're calling all sleeper prospects V-mans. All right? So, who's okay. the V-man of this year's draft? I really do like two guys. Jacob Cowing out of Arizona. He's going to be a player that probably goes somewhere in middle of day three. I would say late third I mean, late fourth round, early fifth round. He's a slot receiver by trade, but he has a big catch radius. The thing about him is also he's made successful plays wherever he's been, whether he was at UTEP and he had over a thousand yards, whether he was at Arizona and he was the number one wide receiver opposite of T-Mac. And then I really like Anaya Smith out of at Texas A&M. Uh, this is a guy that I think offers you some variety when it comes to the pass catching set. But the thing that I love about him is his special team skills. This is a playmaker who can come in right away and offer you versatility on kickoffs, on punt returns. He's one of the all-time leaders at Texas A&M and one of the all-time leaders in the SEC when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to return yards. So I think that he could be a really good sleeper at day three, round six, round early seven. That's probably the two guys that I've targeted the most. I think they both fit in different ways. I don't think that a guy like Luke McCaffrey is a sleeper at this point. Everyone kind of knows who he is. I don't think that Brendan Rice is a sleeper at this point. Everyone knows who he is, but they're probably going to be day three guys as well. Who will be the V-man of the draft? Comment your thoughts. Uh, this super chat is from Michael, who wants to know, what are Kuiper's thoughts on Knoebel? I haven't asked him. Uh, I'll, te I'll text him in a little bit. I'll We're going to have to get Mel on the show, you know, yeah. and, and and get his thoughts. You know, Gator, he... he yeah, can Gator, can Gator help us get Mal on the show very soon? I'm, I'm sure he probably could. I'm sure he could. James Alba checks in. This is a great line right here. I love this. Guys, I came here to talk about Brock Bowers at 10 for the 999th time. Enough of the Kenoble talk. Yeah, that guy George has got to be like the least fun person at parties ever. We could debate Brock Bowers at 10 for the 1,000th straight day, or we could talk about Kenoble. What's more fun? Gee, I wonder. <laughs> uh, Brock Bowers at 10. It's hundred percent more. It's a hundred percent more. I mean, seriously, how do you not? Joe writes in. Cole thoughts on Kenobo's low wonder score of two. Well, I think you mean wonder. Like I say, one, one did. No, no, no. The one Drick score. I understand what he's talking about. Um, that's a very convoluted old school test that hasn't been used since 1974. The Wonder Lick score, though, he got a 41 on. So he actually tested extremely well when it came to that. His mental processing is through the roof. I love that he's able to understand every bit about an offense. But I think the part that really stands out about him is that you uh, you see him and the way that he talks. If you go back and you go onto YouTube and you watch his press conferences, he is somebody that comes out very confident but very poised. He doesn't feel like he is somebody who is overhyping himself, but he is making sure that people understand I am here and I am ready to make a name for myself in the NFL. Ah, Taylor Burks is back from stupid town and still doubling down Yay! on his Bauer boy Bauer mantra. Boy. Jake, you're comparing Nick Chubb to Jarek McKinnon. Remove the tight end label from Bowers. They're nothing like each other stylistically. Please tell me I'm wrong. Incredibly silly argument. If you're trying to act like Kyle Pitts and Brock Bowers aren't similar and it's talking about Chubb to McKinnon, I don't know what to tell you. Well, they might have, like I guess, different playing styles and could be used differently. They were still both labeled as generational tight ends. Go ask any Falcon fan if they would have Kyle Pitts be a top four pick for them again three years later. Your argument still sucks, and you are still a Bauer boy. Bauer boy. I, I don't I don't even want to say anything. I, I, I don't. I, I don't because if, if I do, I'm going to go on a rant. I'm going to lose my mind. You know what? I don't really care anymore. Here's the deal. Brock Bowers is one of the best route runners, has the best hands in the draft, is somebody that can easily fortify an offense. But the fact of the matter is he is an inside guy 
only. He is a playmaker that is not going to be able to convert the exact same way that a Roman Dunze can, the way that a Malik Neighbors can, the way that a Marvin Harrison Jr. can, the way that an Adonai Mitchell can. I think that it's great that all the Jets fans out there that are bleeding the gang green right now are so excited that Brock Bowers gets to go ahead and be a part of this conversation. But there is no comparison between the two. It is a luxury pick. You know what isn't a luxury? Having a wide receiver that can easily come in for your offense the exact same way that Devontae Adams did. And guess who the comparison to Devontae Adams is? Rome Adunze. So I'm sorry. When you have a quarterback that wants to be able to add in somebody who fits the criteria of what worked for him when he was in Green Bay, I would probably target him before anybody else. You're stupid. You have no idea what you're talking about. Please go ahead and go back to the town that we put you in. Nobody wants to deal with your crap anyways, Taylor. I'm sorry that I have to go on this rant, but I'm so annoyed at this. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Th thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you for ruining my day. Congratulations. You ruined the stream. You ruined the stream, Taylor. And that's it for Cole. Nice job, Taylor. You jack wagon. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. We'll let Cole gather his, his thoughts. Maybe we can get him back on here. I'm not so sure, though. I do want to say that today's show is presented by our friends over at JetsXFactory.com. Andrew Fialco on with us yesterday. Robbie Sabo joins us every Tuesday. And tomorrow, making his Jake Asman show debut to do a film breakdown on, you guessed it, Brock Eugene Bowers will be Joe Blewett. So, folks, check out JetsXFactor.com for the most in-depth Jets coverage. Check out the weekly podcast with Robbie Sabo and Jet legend Wayne Corbett. Everything you need in your Jets coverage over at JetsXFactor.com. They're one of our sponsors for the Megacast in Vegas next week. Excited to have Joe Blewett on the show tomorrow. Let's see if Cole has calmed down a little bit. We can get him back on the show, and we'll do some calls and super chats. Hello, Cole. I mean, honestly, he probably thinks that freaking Sal is the most amazing radio show host at WFAN. Congratulations, Taylor. How about this? How about you call into the show and have a real conversation with us? I would love to deal with you on air. Come on. I'll pay you. I'll give you five bucks. Send me your Venmo right now, and I'll pay for you to be on air. Let's have a conversation. Big fella. One sleeper. Marcus Rosemey yes. Jackson. Good player, uh, ex-wide receiver, somebody that I think could fit on the outside extremely well, good inside the red zone, very silent block blocker too. You go back and you watch in this past season, one of the reasons why we had, uh, one of the reasons why Georgia had such a dynamic offense was their ability to block downfield. A guy like Marcus uh, Rosemary Jackson can be that playmaker, big X receiver. I think that he fits the mold of what you're looking for in day three. All right. A good breakdown there. AJ Johnson checks in. Thank you, AJ. He's been a channel member and as maniac for not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven full months. Talking about power is a huge waste of time when Knoebel is the obvious pick. All due respect to Adunze, but Knoebel is best player available. I'm with him, Cole. Honestly, if Knoebel went one, I wouldn't blame Chicago. We could play all positions, both sides yeah. of the ball. Again, here would be okay. Here would be the way that I would take Knoebel. I feel like that, yes, he is a good fit. And yes, I understand my scenario about luxury picks. But let's just say you trade it down to 15. And let's just say after the Giants. So let's just say he gets past the Giants. The Giants, I know, are interested in him. Joe Shane loves those Swiss Army Knife type players. He comes from the background of Buffalo. So you look at a guy such as Khalil Shakir. They want that. If you could move down and get a second round pick and get Knoebel to where you still could get a premier offensive lineman or use that draft capital to trade back up into the first round, get a Graham Barton, get a Jordan Morgan, that to me feels like a win-win scenario for all parties involved. That was where I would take Knoebel. I, I would wait. That 5'7 mobility is a little concerning. I, I understand that he played extremely well at college university. How is he going to translate to the NFL when you're going up against six foot one, six foot two slot receivers? Super chat from James Alba. Any relation to Jessica? Not a Bowers boy, but if the Jets were willing to trade the 10th pick for Debo before drafting Garrett Wilson, why is it different with Bowers? Same player to me. No. Um, I think the main reason why is because Debo's already paid and you got a guy on a five-year contract on a rookie deal. Like that, that to me just feels more likely. Um, when it comes to the same type of player, no, I mean, yeah, they're, they're both versatile in the way that they're utilized in their offenses, but they're completely different on how you want to make them make plays. Like, that's the difference between the two.
when when I watch Bowers, like I see the athletic skills, he still looks like a tight end to me. He doesn't look like a wide receiver, like people keep saying. No, okay, so he's okay. So so we say, or people say all the time, like Darren Waller is a tight end. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's a flex. He's a flex wide receiver. That that's what he is. He does not block. He is not a playmaker that's going to be good inside the red zone outside of being a wide receiver. That's Kyle Pitts. To me, you are getting still a little bit more of that ground blocking when it comes to Brock Bowers. But again, he is a tight end. He is still a tight end. He's a very good tight end. He's very good with his hands. In fact, in my opinion, he's got the best hands in the class and he's arguably the second or third best route runner. But he is a tight end. That's at the end of the line. Where Kyle Pitts is a glorified flex wide receiver. He's talking about Debo though. Yeah, screens, touch behind the line, scrimmage, jets. That's that's not Bowers. That's not. Where are we getting this information that that's Bowers? Do you have proof that Bowers has done that more times than anybody else in college? Like, there's nothing like that. No. They do use him behind the line of scrimmage a lot. Yeah, but they use him in the red zone. They use him on short situations. I don't see it. Like, Debo's completely different than that. Debo can be used on a first down play. Debo can be used when it comes to a second and ten. Like you I know, I, that with Bowers. I, I agree with you, but a lot of Bowers production is from the behind the line of scrimmage, which is also why I wouldn't take him because I don't trust the Jets to be able to scheme him open, which is what you're going to have to do at the next level. But he also can get open in the middle of the field. There, there is a giant difference. Like, like, like Debo can do a little bit of everything too, but like, I think that Bowers actually is a pretty good route runner when you get him in space. He can win at the 10 to 15 marker. That's where I am. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. We're gonna oh, do another. God, Taylor, enough, man, bro. You you've lost this battle. Shut up. Just stop. Taylor, call in, please. The problem is, just like the Zach Wilson truthers, they never show their face. Come on, all- I will pay you. I will pay you. Bauer boy. Hey, we'll I will you- pay you. We'll let you speak to a Bauer boy. Gary's up first today. Hello, no! Gary. <laughs> what what's up, guys? Um, I told I totally lost my train of thought too. Uh, right. Before I, I, I got into uh, Adnai Mitchell, who I like, I, I wanted to ask you just um, how would you rate just top of your list if you were the GM and you were drafting? How would you rank the top three quarterbacks in this draft? Who would you put, and and what order would they be in? You're saying quarterbacks? Quarterbacks, yeah. Kayla Williams number one, which I know that you hate. I know you hate it. Uh, number two is Drake May, and it's been Drake May for a while. I never got into the Jaden Daniels hype. I think Jaden Daniels is a very good quarterback, which is why he's number three. But did did we learn nothing from Justin Herbert a few years ago? Like there was the conversation of, well, he went back to college and that this is going to hurt his draft stock and that he's now QB three. And then the second that he arrived in Los Angeles, he had over 4,000 passing yards and made history and was one of the best quarterbacks immediately when he came into the league. So I think that May in the right system can do that. I think it can be more variety when it comes to the systems because last season, as you know, as a college football fan, Gary, they lost Phil Lungo to Wisconsin and they completely switched up their offensive personnel. And he was a bit without two of his top wide receivers and one of his best running backs, even though they did find Omari and Hampton and they brought over Tez Walker. But still, I think that having that variety of offense and being able to learn a little bit more pro style, but also play in the spread kind of makes him a bit of a do-it-all playmaker. And I think that by the time that we're talking about Drake May at the season's end, we are going to be seeing the prognosis of, I would say, the foundation of what is a franchise quarterback, where I still have those questions with Jaden Daniels. With, with, with Jaden, to be, holy crap, you have cornrows, by the way? I just yeah, realized that. Just holy shit, that? I just yeah. realized that. Holy crap. Uh, no, uh, Jaden Daniels, to me, the biggest problem with him is that I need to see him actually move out of bounds. I need to see him go out of bounds. Like, like he's willing to jump into the arms of a 240-pound linebacker in the SEC and call it a day. That's not going to happen in the NFL. He's going to get drugged to the ground, and that's a concern for me. Then, so who are you, are you I mean, you putting Daniels at 30, you putting someone over him. Like, would, you, would, you, would you put, like, I would put Rattler over him. I don't know what you think of that. Would you put someone over Jaden Daniels? No, but I do like Rattler. I, I mean, Gary, Gary, everyone, Gary, everyone wants to blow moon like your cornrows. Uh, it actually works. It, it does. Your, your takes actually do work. I think that Rattler was one of those players that 
got a bad rep because Caleb Williams beat him out for the starting job. I, I talked to a few scouts when he was at South Carolina last year before the start of the season. I had the and chance every- logo from Gary's head spinning because it was making me dizzy. So <laughs> uh, for those wondering. The thing that people most said was it didn't matter what quarterback was playing at Oklahoma. As long as they had one blundering mistake, it was going to open the avenue for Lincoln Riley to go out to Caleb Williams. So immediately he got this bad rep because if he lost the starting job, he's going to be, I think, a very serviceable quarterback and can last the NFL for probably 10, 12 years. Now, does that mean he needs to be a starter? Probably not. Like, I talked to a buddy of mine that covers the Giants, and I told him, you know, you're looking at maybe moving up for J.J. McCarthy. There's rumors that maybe you want to move down in the draft board. I would move down and then take Spencer Rattler in round three rather than go reach for Bo Nix or maybe go after somebody at pick number six. Like, that, to me, is a lot smarter of a move that I think going after a McCarthy and giving up and giving up draft capital. The other point I, I want to make, he said Adonai Mitchell, who I one more, one more. I, I personally love Adonai Mitchell, right? For a yes. number of reasons. I think he's an excellent football player. My problem with him in the first round is his physical strength. Like in college, he could get thrown off by physical press coverage. In the NFL, I'm not saying he's not going to be good. I'm saying his lack of strength. I mean, I, I think okay. he's okay. an easy guy to, to cover. Yeah, no, listen, I, I understand what you... Knockouts don't matter if you land enough jabs. I mean, you, 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 you can do them easy. <laughs> Real fast, Gary, just, um, I understand what, you, what you're saying. Adonai Mitchell came out and even said at the at the Combine that he was not going full speed. If he's in the right offense with the right, right wide receivers coach, they're going to tell him straight up, if you ever take, off, you take your foot off the gas, you are benched for the likes of the rest of the game. And then he'll be able to pick it up the pace. So there you go. He landed, a, he, he landed a few jabs. Good for him. No, Gary, Gary's been on it lately. I've, I've enjoyed his calls. Bobby's am, up next. Bobby, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Cole? Hey. I know you now. I did, couldn't think. I got a brain fart this morning when I called in Jake. So who's Cole? Yeah. Now I remember you, the Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, what's up, dude? Yeah, don't bother. Don't worry about that guy in chat. You know, he's not, he doesn't have the balls to come up and talk to you. I know he doesn't. Bobby does. Bobby does. Taylor, where are you? Where are you, Taylor? I'll talk on here and then I could talk in there, but, you know, we could say they type in whatever they want and then they don't want to say it right in front of your face. Yeah, because everyone's a a Twitter warrior. It's always fun that way. Chicken. They're chicken to talk to you. I'm not chicken, right, Jake? I say everything. Well, and Bobby, it, you call you call up the fan and ask him about Canoble. You're definitely yeah. not chicken. Yeah, I was crazy that they called. <laughs> uh, uh, Wednesday night, I called up Keaton Pearson. You know uh, him? You, you're my hero. I mean, you're my hero at this point. Yeah, I loved it. It was it was one of the best hey, interviews the I've seen. Did, the other guy did, too. What was his name? Um, Johnny Quest. Yeah, Johnny Quest. He followed me up. He says, oh, my, Bob... F- Called in the other night talking about Knoble. Knoble from college. Yeah. I gotta believe I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. But no, I think that do you think the Jets go after Joe Alt? It, okay, Bobby, if you want my honest opinion right here and right now, if I was trading up, I would be trading up for Joe Alt. I that would be the move that I would make. Personally, I don't think that it will happen. I think that honestly, they're going to, if they're trading up, it's for a wide receiver. But I believe Alt can be honestly up to the same level as Trent Williams when it comes to the flexibility, when it comes to the stability, the durability. He has all that skill set. And the fact that he also came from playing tight end and moving over to offensive tackle, he's six foot eight. Like that's somebody that I can build my franchise around. And I don't really care as long as my quarterback is someone as decent as Brock Purdy. I'll find success. Like as long as he could stay upright, I'm good. I would trade up for for Joe Wall. That would be my move personally. Jets carpetbagger checks in with a super chat and cuts the line. I think Kenobo's first name is Tungan or Hawaiian. I hear it's. I don't know how to pronounce it. Kalihana. Kalihana means Kalihana. legendary chief from Hawaiian mythology. Have you heard different? I, I have not done enough homework on the aspect of his name. I, I I was just impressed O'Leary was able to get the testing scores today. That's that's where we're, my focus has been on the testing scores. Obviously, the size. Look, that's the one knock. Everything else checks out. The origins of his name, I guess, we'll cover next. 
I think he's just like Seal. Honestly, I, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have a first name or he doesn't have a last name. He just goes by one synonym. Like, that's his surname. And you know what? Honestly, that's kind of okay with me. I'd he's like rather... Madonna. You know, he's yeah. like Ichiro, just a one-name guy, you know? He's a one-name dude. What, what's the problem with that? Like, honestly, they're all superstars like for a Steel. reason. I just or... said Seal. I oh, just said, you? yeah, I just said wow. Seal. Of course, thank you, Jake. See, like I Prince. said... See, exactly. Like, Prit. see, you, I, you you tune out when I go on my rants, don't you? I see, I see you're on your phone right now. It's like, yep, yeah, oh, look at that. Uh, yeah, there's Jake. Uh, oh, boy. What's going on? Mm, mm, mm. Yes, Seal. Oh, yeah, Cole, Cole, Cole. Yes, Seal. It's a good one. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, I. there's just too much going on, man. We got to keep track of the calls and the super chats, you know. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey goes, the artist formerly known as Kenobo. <laughs> yeah. Maybe his first name's Talon. I don't know. Maybe. It's it's tremendous. All right, uh, more calls here. That we will do a quick seven round mock for the final time. John's up next. Hello, John. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey, John. Hey, uh, Cole. I'm a big fan of yours. Um, Thank you. I and uh, I always appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I always appreciate you know your your intellect and uh, your perspective on things. Um, I will be uh, subscribing to your your show later on because. Thank uh, you. Thank yeah. you. I, I I mean I don't know who that jackass was that was giving you a hard time that made you come back, mm -hmm. but I'm really happy that you came back on. Um, that being said, I wanted to ask you guys um, hypothetically. Uh, let's say there's a deal done with uh, Bakhtiari um, that uh, the Jets signed Bakhtiari to a one year deal. Um, how would that affect the draft? Do you see um, Joe Douglas still being? Uh, still wanting to uh, trade up to get a wide receiver and or offensive tackle? Or do you see him uh, trading all the way down to someone like the Eagles or the Bengals trying to pick up that second round pick? Um, and then who would you uh, say the Jets would try to get in that scenario if that was a trade down to say like, you know, somewhere between 15 to like 18? Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, receiver and offensive tackle. Thanks, guys. Real fast, but, but before John goes real fast, John, are, are you wearing a military uniform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on break. Uh, jo John, thank you for your service. Thank you for defending our country. Thank you for putting your life on the line. And, and thank you for thank you for always making sure that we are safe at, at our own homes at night. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, I think from everybody in that comment section, thank you Matter for your fact, service. Shout out to all the veterans in the chat. Patreon. Shout out to all the veterans in the chat. Absolutely. And thank, thank you, John. And, and really good, really, really good question. So Bakhtiari, um, I don't think it's off the table, but it would have to be for a very cost-friendly deal. I mean, this is a guy that hasn't played in almost two years. This is somebody that you don't know for a fact is going to be fully healthy when he gets to the camp. You don't know what version you're going to get anymore. It does give you position flexibility to where I don't think you have to go immediately target an offensive tackle if you were to move down or target an offensive tackle if you were to move up. It doesn't take you out of the running from doing it either. But right. I feel like that if you are bringing in Bacchiardi and, and you do believe that the medicals number one are clear, it at least makes you feel more comfortable maybe taking a swing on an interior offensive lineman like a Cooper Beebe or a Christian Mahogany in round three where you could target a wide receiver. I personally, if I'm at pick number 15 through 18, I would go after Adonai Mitchell. Uh, honestly, at that point, if he were to fall, if he were to fall, and this is where I will give Taylor his credit, if he were to fall to 18, wow. I will take Brock Bowers. At 18, I don't care. I'm That's not taking him at 10. But I do understand the scenario where you do want to be able to have somebody – a why I mean a tight end that can be position flexible that does have a lot of versatility to his game and the value there is a lot stronger you know the, the thing that people don't pay attention enough about when it comes to is contract negotiations where you are in the draft selection so Kyle Pitts who is a glorified wide receiver and a flex and a flex tight end because he offers really nothing in blocking is going to be getting paid more than Jamar Chase who has over a thousand yards and quadruple the amount of touchdowns because of draft position You'll feel better about Brock Bowers at 18 because of how little you're paying him compared to what you would be paying him at 10. Right. Uh, I would take him at 18, by the way, too, John. Like, if you can get a second round pick and a trade down, I think he's worth it at that point. Like, like, like to me, that, that, that that's a giant win. You you walk out still in line to be able to move up at the end of the round one, 
stay around two, make the moves in round three if you want to. Okay, so, Cole, uh, so yeah, you're in a good spot. Cole, in that scenario, if we get to 18 and we do pick Bowers, yes, uh, who is your second round choice? I would go off into tackle. I would hope that Jordan Morgan was available. Uh, I would do everything possible to probably move up in line to maybe go get a Jordan Morgan. Uh, I would also look at Graham Barton if he were to fall. I, I, I think that having that position flexibility to be able to play most spots in the interior line, even if you had to swing him outside a tackle, is pretty decent. Um, at that point also, I think that maybe you want to look at maybe a wide receiver simply because of you can't have too many weapons. There's a lot of good wide receivers that are going to be available in round two. You know, I... I know that a lot of people in the Jets comment section hate this pick, but I love Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. I think that he is going to be a human highlight reel in the right offense. He's got that size. I think that there's something about him that playing in an offense where he had to take control and he had to be attentive. Like, like people are crapping on Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler had no time to throw a football, and yet you still were able to get over 800 receiving yards this past season as the only real legit weapon in Columbia. So. I like him a lot, and then it would give you an opportunity to maybe go after like a Cooper BB in round three, which I think would be a road mauler and help out in the run game a lot. Fair enough. Appreciate your time, guys. Thank you, John. John. Thank you for your service, buddy. Yeah, appreciate it. John, have you called before? Uh, Once, yeah. Once. Call back again soon, all right? Appreciate everything you do. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. One last call for you, Cole, and then mock draft, and I'll stay on for the calls if you got to run. No, I got um, I got till 5 p.m. tonight, so we good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can't have this guy come on the show without doing this first. Warning! Warning! Alan alert! Shit's about to get ugly, folks. Warning! Alan alert! Hide the children! Yeah. Alan? First of all, good afternoon, boys. Uh, yes. Hello, Alan. Frightens me. Hello, how are you, Jake? It frightens uh, me uh, <laughs> from the last time I spoke with Cole to today that I actually agree with 99% of his takes. I'm done. I'm done. We don't even and need to I'm do a mock draft. I made Alan happy. Too. That's the worst part, okay? That's crazy. Bye, Cole. Um, quick question. It's it's scary, Cole. It really is. I know. And I'm moving to your state, too. That's the worst part, okay? That's crazy. I will say Texas is a pretty big state, Alan. Oh, thank God. We're not close to each other. I appreciate it. Two questions, Cole. Um, if Sam Laporta had competent quarterback play in college, would he have been a top 20 pick? Oh. You can't hear him? Huh? Oh, well, he's having a mic issue. Cole, okay. you reset your browser. Um, <laughs> I, I guess you can ask, he can, he can weigh out of that question when he comes back. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, Anything and, else on your mind, Alan? You know, yeah, should we fire Salah right now? What do you think? Oh, I would fire Salah too. Again, <laughs> I would. He's, he's still crap. Me yep. and Peter Castro agree with that. We will never change our stance on yeah, that. Yeah, you one. guys, you got you guys are uh, leading the anti-Salah charge. He's a ham and egger coach, and he will always be for me. Um, I close that. Right, Cole, you, that. What's there up? you go. Okay, two comments. Yes. If Sam Laporta had competent quarterback play in college. Oh, would in he college. have been okay. a, Hold on. In college. Okay. Would he have been a top 20 pick? No, but he probably would have been a first round pick. Okay. I, because I, that's I, why I will cave and say he could have been a first round pick. I I very much like Samuel Porter coming out. I, I I could have seen a scenario where yes, he would have gone round one. Okay. And my second question, because I know a lot of people say, why did he get picked in the second round? He got picked in the second round because they had high school quarterbacks playing with him. Yeah, okay? basically. Um my second question, I know you brought up the name Graham Barton, and that's a guy I covet. I would love for them to trade back and maybe get him. If we make a trade with Philly and Philly comes up for Quinion Mitchell at 10, could we take Barton at 22, get a second-round pick, and maybe get one of either Pearsall, Roman Wilson, or Malachi Corley in round two? I don't hate that. God, why do I agree with you? I I, uh, I I don't like Barton at 22. I like him at like maybe 27, 28. Like if Buffalo were to be willing to give up a King's ransom to go get Roma Dunze if he were to fall that far, that to me feels like a huge win because of then you're going to get at least a second round pick, probably at least one first round pick and a definitely a mid round pick in 2025. 
that to me is probably a really good win to where you would be able to go get somebody like a Graham Barton. But 22, it also depends on what's available. That's the other thing. What is available when it comes to wide receivers? What is available when it comes to, uh, you know, what's available when it comes to offensive linemen? That's where we have that question mark. I read, I brought up 22 because I keep on reading that the Packers really love him at 25. Well, I've heard Jackson Powers Johnson too, so. I could see Jackson Powers Johnson going to Miami at 19. I could see them playing him at center. But I'm talking about getting a Barton at 25 is one name I've heard Green Bay going after. That's why I thought of 22. I didn't think he would get to 26 or 27. And how would you rank the three receivers I brought up? And that's Pearsall, Roman Wilson, and Malachi Corley. It's really interesting because of like, I think Roman Wilson's a really fun player. But I also just don't think that he is going to be able to make that same type of impact in the same way that maybe a Pearsall would or Corley would. So I'll put him at three. I really like Malachi Corley. I have since the very beginning of last season when he started to go off of Western Kentucky. I really think that he can be a difference maker in the slot. And there's actually a shot where you can line him up outside. I'll put him at one only because of I know what the consistency is. And I do like Pierce Pearsall. Uh, you know, Pearsall was a name that didn't garner a lot of attention, I think, at the start of the year because the Florida's offense was really bad and, and they had a lot of miscommunications. But you also have to realize there was a point where Florida started gaining a little bit of traction. They were five and two, and that was largely due to Eugene Wilson and Ricky Pearsall in the back uh, at, at wide receiver. There is an opportunity for him to, I think, be a complimentary piece to any offense. I think Corley can be a 1,000-yard receiver in the right system pretty quickly. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey. I like this. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Harris is back, a.k.a. One King Cat's backup account. Let's go, baby. Is that yeah. real money? Oh, yeah. He's making it rain. You live Hell in New York yeah. and you have real money to sitting out and about? Jesus, Hell Jake. Hell yeah, baby. Let's go. Give me, Woo! Give me the money. I need the money. He's, I'm broke. He's also an Army vet of 13 oh. years. So we thank him for his service. Let me tell yes. you something. King Cat earlier, Cole, he, he super chatted $500 in my first show earlier and now another $100. I mean, this is just unreal thank you so much jordan you got once half again. a g earlier good for you thank Seriously, you what can i do to get that you got a strip you know yeah. or, or selfie pics um but but uh shout out to jordan harris seriously man aka king cat i mean i think i think youtube maxed him out on the amount of money he was able to spend which is why he needed the ship to the backup account i'm pretty sure that's why clarify if i'm right jordan but i think that's why uh he had to switch to this account but he says malik neighbors all right cole What would be the max you'd be willing to trade up? Answer Jordan's question here to get Malik neighbors. I'm going to be completely real. I wouldn't do it. Really? Because of I would do. Oh God. We'll get back to that in a minute. I, I, I want Roma Dunze for this offense. That's the thing now. Okay. If if you're asking me to be clear as day, I'd give up a third round pick and I give up a fifth round pick to move up three spots to go get them. But I would rather go for Roma Dunze. I feel like for this offense to complement Garrett Wilson, the best guy of the three is Roma Dunze. And I've said that for a while. I believe that as wholeheartedly as possible. For this offense, I personally think that Roma Dunze could be that Devontae Adams, can be that playmaker, can be that big-time red zone threat, can work the middle of the field, and he's going to open up the playbook for Garrett Wilson. You know Garrett Wilson is a damn good number one. Imagine having another guy that can go ahead and take the top off of defenses and work the middle of the field just like Devontae Adams. That's Roma Dunze to me. Cole, this is the greatest flex I have ever seen. This guy just super chatted another $100. Oh, my God. Money. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. He made a separate YouTube account to submit more $100 just bombs. Give me. Yes. Jordan, not only thank you for your service, thank you for probably paying for me and Jake to get drunk over the next couple of days. Good for you. I mean, this is unreal. I don't care if I do like a loser. I, I, this is awesome. This is great. Jordan, Jordan Harris has become my hero. 
<laughs> Another super chat here. This one's from James Fitzpatrick. Sleeper, Bo Allen, running back Wisconsin, safe fourth round. Saw him live. He's a truck. Only 20 years old. Kimberly Brees when leading. Uh, I'm sure Jets saw him studying Joe Tipman. If the Jets were to go running back, is Bo Allen a guy that would make sense, Cole? I don't want to be rude because if James just gave us 10 bucks, Braylon Allen. Um, is it Braylon Allen? It's not Braylon Bo? Allen. It's, it's okay. Braylon Allen. I, he's not wrong. The fourth round is probably where he's going to land. I, I think that maybe at the end of round three during the compensatory picks, maybe you see a team take a flyer on him. I do think he's underappreciated. And the part that James does bring up is he is young. He got into college when he was 17. His first year, he was 18, and he was just a true 18-year-old. There is a lot to love about his game, his physicality, brute strength. He is a tank. He is hard to bring down. I do think that a team is going to get a really good complimentary running back in Braylon Allen. Do you want to take him in round four is the question. Like that's the, that's the thing. Do you feel like you need a running back in round four? Or would you rather wait till round five, round six, maybe get a guy that is a little bit more unproven and maybe not a household figure, but at the same time, you adjust other positions first and then you get another complimentary piece opposite of a guy in, in, uh, in Brees Hall. Dark Knight Steve's got two quick hitters. Does Alan's shirt say awesome? Referring to himself. Alan, what did your shirt say? I wasn't paying attention. And I thought it said Knight awesome. Alan awesome. That's what I thought it said. Did you think that was a good one? Yeah, I did. I did. I think it. I think I'm hysterical. My wife doesn't. Most people don't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how much fun is it to drink with Cole? It's a fun time. I've done it many times. Yeah, I mean, trust me. Uh, J see, and there, there's been a few times where Jake said to drink to drag me home. Uh, I finally got to do it with Jake on his last trip, and it was fun. It was a good time. Good what time. trip was that? What's it called? You you saw me in Vegas. Holy crap! There was two nights where I just was. Oh nice. yeah, oh yeah, and then uh, my going away party. I got your going away party. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. Hundred percent. You were my DD that night. I was. Uh, I know. It was. It was a fun time. <laughs> yes, I was like. I was like. What? I was like. Oh yeah, the night I don't remember much. Oh yeah, the night. That, the night that literally <laughs> we had to help you up the stairs. It was fun. It was a good time. Oh yeah, it was a good time. Love Houston. Shout out the Drift Bar. They always take good care of me. Yes, they uh, did. And for all my Houstonians who are watching the show still. Um, all right. I want to get this guy in here because he's a big fan of yours. And then we will quickly, because there's really not much to say at this point in regards to the mocks, rapid fire, a quick seven That's round fine. mock. Rich, what's up, Rich? Hi. Um, hey, Cole, as I've said before, uh, Rich, I apologize. Breaking Jesus news. Another, Christ, uh, another 100 dollars. You got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. Me. I feel so awesome. This guy has super chatted, I kid you not, like $900 today. Can we please have him on the show? Please can he call into the show? Yeah, Jordan Harris, show your face, man. Please, it, Jordan Harris, please. I mean, who are you? Or did you win the lottery? Are you like, you know, are you, are you related to like Zuckerberg or Musk or something? I mean, this is unbelievable. Uh, let's get to a super chat. We'll go right back to Rich. I say, please uh, go back to Rich. I feel so bad. I don't know. No, we, uh, honestly, Rich, Rich, Rich is probably honored that Jordan Harris is making it rain. I mean, Rich gets it. Players that I want the Jets to sell their souls for Malik Neighbors, Ray Davis, or Frank Gore Jr. Consolation. <laughs> Prize dot 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 Ricky Perso. We talked about Ricky earlier. I'm a big fan. I like neighbors a lot. Um, so I, I, I would be comfortable with the Jets traded up for him. I would hope they don't have to trade next year's one, but we'll see. We haven't talked about Ray Davis or Frank Gore Jr., though, Cole. So give us a scouting report on both guys for Jordan Harris here. Frank Gore Jr. is probably a guy that is going to be a complimentary running back for the rest of his career. I would say late day three, probably sixth, seventh round. Ray Davis, though, holy shit. I'm sorry for cussing, but I don't really give a crap right now. This dude is a bowling ball, and he's got great speed. I know that he only weighs, he doesn't weigh, uh, he doesn't weigh like 225 pounds, but if you watch him in the open field, he is not afraid to lower his shoulder and truck you. He had over 200 rushing yards against Florida. He had a really good game against Tennessee. He did it the year before also when he was at Vanderbilt. He was like the one only thing on that offense that was worth paying attention to. He is a really good running back. I feel like that he's probably going to be a good pick in round three, round four. God, Taylor, shut the hell up, you whiny little bitch. God bless. Holy shit. Do you just have nothing else better to do with your life besides making fun of people? Because of, honestly, I'm having more fun watching you suffer than anything else. 
We'll 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 we'll, we'll put him in timeout for fun. Holy shit! I've never seen a spoiled brat act like he knows more about draft content and never call into the damn show. If you want to go ahead and talk your mad shit, go ahead. I will pay you. We have money. We have a lot of money. Thank you, Jordan. I'll give you some of Jordan's money for you to call in and give your takes. But I guarantee you won't. I guarantee you won't. Nobody like you actually ever does. Just like the Zach Wilson truthers. When I called it out back in 2021, I told you all it was not going to be a good pick. I told you all it was never going to end up panning out. I told you all that it was going to be one of the worst things that ever happened because if he wasn't a good quarterback. But nobody wanted to call me. Nobody wanted to go ahead and message me on Twitter. When I go ahead and call them out, they were all silent. Where are you? Where are you, Taylor? Where are you? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see you. I will give you money. I will give you money to come on the show. Please come on the show. Rich is up next. Rich, hello. Hi, Rich. I apologize. Oh, my God. We got it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, hopefully I bring you more luck, Jay. <laughs> Hi, both... Rich. I, ap- I apologize for my anger. No, hours. you both deserve accolades and any monetary. You both work your ass off. What I was going to say is, Cole, you, you know, you're one of my favorites because you're, you're, you're knowledgeable, but your personality always puts me in a good mood. You know, and you're knowledgeable, and 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 you're why and I love your shirts. Uh, about it's a 25. bit at this point. I actually have bought. I'm not gonna lie. So, so if someone asked me in the comment section, how many Hawaiian shirts do I have? I bought four for the show. Like I did. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. 25 years ago, like I never buy anything for myself. My wife said, you know, she went out and bought. She she overdid it. She went and bought uh, some these vintage from vintage places. They were like 400 bucks each. You know. And it's like the replica of Elvis's Blue Hawaii and and from here to eternity, but whatever. But uh, you just mentioned the cannonball thing. And it was funny with, with Knobel saying that 5'7 and 198 remind me of where you are and where Jake used to be in Houston. You're too, you guys are too young, though. You remember Charlie Tolar, the human cannonball for the <laughs> Houston? Was he was he for uh was he for the AFL. Oh, AFL, okay. Houston Oilers. He was 5'5", 200. He was a star. He made all pro. And uh but beyond that, uh so is that the comp I, for Knobel? That's that's what we're saying here. Yeah, basically. Yeah, human human cannibal. Cannibal. Human I like cannibal. that. But the uh before I get to the, my my question, Jake, you don't get enough credit for your spot on Hank Kingsley Hey now. It is great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I started watching Larry Sanders because it reminded me of it. So I started watching reruns. My hey question now, I is, got you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the greatest shows, if anybody wants to binge watch Larry Sanders. But uh, my question is, it's off the wall. You're probably going to say, but he wouldn't do it. But everybody says the draft is stacked. We got a good scouting department, blah, blah, blah. Ayuk and and Samuel, somebody's going to go. So what happens if San Francisco and the Jets, San Francisco wants to get up and get one of the receivers if they're there at 10. The Jets would then be able to, by Jimmy Johnson's chart, be able to get swap picks. They'd be able to get 30. There we go. There we go. Okay. We'd be able to get 31. We'd be able to get their second round pick at 62. We keep ours which is 72, we'd get their third round pick at 94. And by the chart, we would get their second round pick in 2025. Okay. So, Rich, real fast, you're saying it's for Samuel and who else? No, I'm not saying it's for anybody. I'm saying – No, 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 no. no. Want, if they want to trade, it was for Samuel. And who, who was the other guy? It wasn't Kittle. Oh, no, was I there. said they're going to probably lose one of those guys somewhere. Who is it? Samuel in the AO. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, they're probably going to lose one of those guys. You're so say they want, I, You're talking about IU. Yeah, IU. Yeah, IU. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, say I know what you're talking about. Say they want to replace them and, and say one of the guys are there at 10. We could get, like I said, their first. We'd swap first. We could get their second, third, and we would get their second in 2025 because that's the three – the points left would represent the last six spots. I don't think the they draft. do it, Rich. That's a lot no, for I them know to they, Okay, no, see, and if they don't, how about just getting a Ayuk for you know going back and, and doing that? So I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it because then you're gonna I, have to okay. pay friends. I IU. disagree, I disagree. See, okay, so here's the thing here's the thing I actually agree with Rich for one of them. I would not do it for, for Debo Samuel, I would not do it for Debo, I would do it for Ayuk, and I would do it if I get 31 in the process. That's I what would I meant. Do it, yeah, if I can walk out. 
or if I can at least get two mid-round picks. So if I could get Ayuk, let's say their second round pick, let's say their third round pick, and let's say a 2025 second round pick or a 2025 third round pick, I would do it. I, without question, would do it. And then I would sign Ayuk to a long-term deal. But I don't think San Francisco is going to be willing to give up that much draft capital for a guy that they know is probably going to be frustrated with the team. And they're also going to have to now give up significant draft compensation. Like there have been rumors for a while talking about maybe Jacksonville moving all the way down or they just give up 17 for Ayuk because they need a new number one receiver. I could see it. But if I could walk out with 31, and I, I would make that trade 10 times over. I have never loved this man more in my life. He's done it again. We'll see you later, Rich. <laughs> it's like, it's like the freaking, it's like Shaw sick. I'm getting red with money. I love it. I, I can't I love this today. man so much. I'm mid-flight right now. I'll 100% call in with the Jets trade up and grab neighbors. Again, love your work. Y'all be safe and go Jets. Ladies and gentlemen, pound the chat with all the emojis to show your gratitude for Jordan Please. Harris. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. Oh, Unbelievable. my God. I love this man. Please. Hey, you know, hold on. I'm going to put Rich back on to see if someone else wants to spend money on this channel. Come Hello, on. Rich. Hi, yeah, Rich. I was going to say, I'm your, mu I'm your money muse here. He's not like allowed that. to leave. He's not allowed to leave. We need to keep him on. Somebody from the Jake Asma <laughs> show just showed up at my house, and they got a they got a chain on my foot. I can't leave my chair anymore, <laughs> you know, because it's he, raining money. Uh, no, he, he oh, needs God. to stay. I, you know, Rich, Rich should be a part of our mock draft because we're just going to get donations nonstop. It's going to be flowing like <laughs> that, like 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 the like the Nile. A hundred percent. Come on. But, but I, I know that what I said was a pipe dream, but, 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 but it was just, but why, uh, why is it a pipe dream? Well, no, no, because, because you know, everybody always says, says that they wouldn't do it, but I kind of like the fact of everybody says we need a wide receiver. So, you know, and then we could pick up, my question was going to be, if you, because you agreed with what I said about keeping 30, keeping 31 and I, who yeah. would you then take at 31? I hate to agree with him. If he's there, I take Graham Barton. Okay. I would take Graham Barton from Duke. So then, so we get both. But we want the the receiver yeah. and the lineman. Here, here. I, no, I I think your trade is interesting, Rich. I don't see the Niners trading Ayuk, and then like, uh, and I don't necessarily see the Jets wanting to make that deal where they're trading the number ten pick, and then you got to pay Ayuk, and they're thinking about already having to pay Garrett Wilson after this year when he's up for an extension. I I think the Jets would rather just move up and get one of the big three rather than have to bring in Ayuk and then offer him a contract, if that makes sense. I could be wrong. Maybe they love the player yeah, and they'll do it. I, but I, I, I don't think they'll do sides. it. I understand I, both sides. Here, the, the thing with me, though, when it comes to this deal, the thing with me that I truly would love to see is you're getting a veteran. You're getting a veteran wide receiver for this room to where you already know what is expected. The one caveat is you're going to have to pay him. If you're going to trade pick number 10, even if you get pick number 31 in the process, you're going to have to pay him. And at that point, you are playing the risk-reward game with potentially losing out on Garrett Wilson in a few years, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't think at all it's going to happen. But you are probably going to have to at least have the conversation. And the thing I already bring up is because of you look right now with Texans, they just voided the last three years of Stefan Diggs' contract. Well, let's just say Diggs goes off next year. And let's just say Nico Collins goes off next year. So if both of them end up actually having 1,000-yard seasons, you have to decide who are you giving that contract to long-term and who are you franchise tagging to keep around for one more year. It just – it doesn't work. It doesn't. But to me, that really, 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 really is an interesting is an interesting observation. And if I could, and I would do it. If Sorry Caps didn't exist, I'd make that trade tomorrow. And in closing, it's this last, last appearance for a while, I heard, so I want to wish my best to – you and your family, and uh, you know it's been great talking to you. Oh, Rich, you, know, you, Rich, you get me next week. Oh, I thought Jake. No, said I'm on. Was, I'm on all next week. I'm on. I'll, I'll, last I'll be on the mega cast. Oh, yeah, I, I understand now. You now I understand what Jake meant. It was the last regular. Yeah. Yeah, this I, is our last mock draft that we're doing together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Then, then I'll call in. But uh, you know, thanks, guys, and uh, Jake. Good luck. Uh, I really mean it. Good luck in the Canes Isles. 
series. I'm down here in Raleigh, and no uh, injuries, Rich. Let's hope both teams stay healthy. Say. Let's Wait, hold up, hold up, Rich. You're in Raleigh. Yeah, you're in North Carolina. Yeah. New favorite guest, people. Move to North Carolina, you become my new favorite guest. North Carolina is a safe haven. It is a beautiful location. It is one of the pipe dreams. It is one of the wonders of the United States of America. Rich is living out his best dream because he's a Jets fan that lives in the greatest, greatest state outside of probably Texas and New York. I love Rich. Moved here in 1983 and and, uh, helped start the uh, Jets Raleigh fan club, which has been going on now for about 40 years. Wow. uh, and we got about uh, you know 60, 70 strong that show up at the bar every week. And, and one I, of them is that guy Edward Ziff who calls the show, right? right? That's I, right. I am going to come to an NC State game this year. Rich, I'm going to find you. We are going to enjoy whatever beverage Shake wants to provide for us because if you just got us four hundred dollars in the last two in the last twenty minutes, so Jake is going to buy us a round. You're a state fan. You're a state fan. I love NC State. Now I'm not. No, okay. I'm not. I didn't go there, but. I love Dave Duran and I love the Carolina guy. Just got to let you know, both, both my boys went to Carolina. Yeah. I hate Tar Heels. Yeah. Drake, yeah, Drake so that's May. All the May. I'm just I said, kidding. We get more, I said, did we get more money? No, I just let's play the, uh, the money alarm. It's just, that was tremendous. All right. Can we rattle off our, our final seven round mock? Yeah. Cause you got me for about another 20 minutes. So yeah, we got that'll be quick. Uh, here we go. We're not going to spend that much time because by now everyone understands the situation. But here we go, folks. Without further ado, and we're using ESPN Simulator, which I've been playing around with. I like it a lot better than PFN. So I'm going to go full screen on StreamYard here for everyone to watch. And we're going to try and make a big splash. All right, here we go. Seven rounds. Speed is normal. Let's let it rip. Here we go. I said, Are here we go. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I said, here we go. God. All right. All right, let's trade up for Bowers. Start the draft. Dun, 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 dun. Let's trade up for Bowers. Let's go. All right, hold on. I paused it right here. Because if you look at the board right now, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, all, all gone. But Chicago- he is oh, oh, actually, but he no, we're on the clock. Oh, oh, I'm doing it. I, I don't care. Do it. Take him. Take it in, Zay. You want a wide receiver. The wide receiver that I want for the Jets is there. Take it in, Zay. This is a Roma Dunze pick, right? Take Roma Dunze. Yep. I, 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 I would love nothing more than to take an offensive lineman, but you and I talked about this before the show. We were going to walk out of the first round with the wide receiver, and the wide receiver that is the best fit for this offense is still there. Take Roma Dunze. Rome Riders. All we have to do is just... Put the pick in, and we got Rome at 10. Boom. Boom. Excellent job. It's right. it's it's su- it, it's such a good fit. It is such a good fit. I'm so – I am so excited to see what Aaron Rodgers will do with Garrett Wilson, Roma Dunze, now having a hopeful, healthy Mike Williams and a good rushing attack with a better offensive line. Yeah, the problem with ESPN Simulator is it's not it's slow as crap. It's not simulating. Yeah. So maybe we only do a one round mock draft. We got to do and say, let's call it a day. Honestly, at this point, why not? <laughs> why not? Listen, I mean, you, I, walk, you walked out with the, you walked out with a win. You walked away with a top five player at pick number 10 and a guy that is hopefully going to be the next Devonte Adams for your offense with Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. I think that's a win. Is it possible ESPN doesn't want us to see us see, see me happy. So they won't let me finish the mock. All right, there we go. The pick has been made. Now, I do wonder, could we trade back into round two? I'm going to pause it around 50 to see what it will take to get back into the second round just to play just to play around. I want to see who's available. That's the other question. I'm pausing it right here. All right, so the Eagles are on the clock at pick 50. Just to kind of look at the big board to get a feel, if Joe Douglas wanted to say F them picks and try and move back into the next round. I'm going to look at the tackles first. I know the Jets like Kingsley Solomati. I think that had him in for a top 30 visit. Patrick Paul is still here. That's another guy I know that Joe Douglas personally met with at the Senior Bowl. Uh, I don't know much on Dominic Pooney. I know some people seem to like him, though. From Kansas, Jones. yeah, he's 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 a decent tackle. Are any of these guys, in your opinion, worth trading up for, or do we wait till pick 73 and hope that one of the tackles is there? Could we, if if you could trade, not at 50, but let's just say like around 58 if he was there, I would make a play for Patrick Paul. 
Okay, so let's let's try and pause it around then and see if we could be aggressive. All right, okay. I stopped at a fifty-seven. Go, just, 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 just go to sixty. Let's just see. Well, let's just see what the big board is right now. Uh, Kingsley's the next best player, and yeah. Pearsall, but we already got a receiver. You don't need Her a receiver. Should I, should I try and, and get to the Bucks right now and see if we could get them? You know what? Just do it. Let's let's just see what the asking price is. All let's right. let's see what is what what they're looking for. So seventy two. Yep, I, I'll give them one of my fours. Okay. And I'll give them a six. Give them. And we're just getting fifty seven. Try and get try and get like a try and get like a six just to see. And let's see if that let's see let's see if that uh, that's enough to move in around two. All right. I All right. so here's here's where the F them picks models comes in. I want to get back in the second round so bad. I'm I'm using next year's third. Then take out one of the fours. I feel like you gotta at least walk away with one of them. I so right now we still have one of our fourth round picks. Okay. One eleven. I'm just, using one thirty four in a trade. Tr take out one eighty five. I just want to see if it works. If it doesn't, then go ahead and do it. They accepted. We're on the yeah, yeah. Uh, you you just you brought it up. You gave him for a top thirty visit. He has a decent ra. Uh, let me see. What's his ras score ranking? I know Joe Douglas likes the ras score. He's the forty third ranked player by ESPN. We're getting him a pick fifty seven. Yeah, he has a ras score of nine point four zero. It makes sense. Do it. All right, boom. There's our tackle, Jet fans. We traded future draft capital next year. F them picks. Got back into round two. Now we wait until round four. And now we'll just let it rip on these final picks here. And for those asking about Knobel, Knobel went in the top 10 in this mock. He's not available. All right. I think he went, to the, he went to the Giants, right, at pick six? He, he went even higher than that. He went four to the Cardinals. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. He was the first non-quarterback off the board. And think about it. He beat he out could, Marvin? He could still play quarterback. He plays all the positions. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess he could. Well, the problem with this mock draft is it is not working. But now we're wow. Now we're Zach Frazier fell all the way to fifty-eight. I, mm -mm, I just don't see that happening. Folks, we're mocking it right now, baby. Here we go. We don't have our third round pick because we just used it to get it back into round two. But we do have a pick in the fourth round, and that is at pick one eleven of round four. All right, so we're getting close. I don't feel. Let's see. Braylon Trice just came off the board. Dwayne Carter. So Braylon Allen, the guy that people were talking about, he just went literally a pick before. To, I think it was Los Angeles. Let's check quarterbacks here. Rattler is still here. This would be the earliest the Jets, I think, would take a quarterback. Would Is Spencer Rattler worth a fourth-round pick? Do you believe he is worth keeping around? Do you believe that he has any opportunity to potentially start in a pinch and give you the results that you're looking for? I mean, he's not starting until... In, 2025 unless... minimum. But what I'm saying is, let's just let's just say Rodgers gets hurt. Let's just say Rodgers and then, has... And then Tyrod got hurt? I mean... Yeah, and then Tyrod gets hurt. Would you rather... Uh, by the way, we're not doing Jordan Travis. I'm not playing for that game. I'm offensive, wide receiver-wise, Javon Baker's still here. Malik Washington is still here. I like the value there. I'm, I'm just going to look at the safeties here, because the Jets could use another safety. Any safeties you like? <sighs> not... Malik Mustafa, I would take probably in the fifth round. I wouldn't take him in the fourth, so no. All right, let's look at running backs. Ray Davis is here. Do you really want to take a running back this high? Do you feel like you could get better value later on? I want to score points, so I'm not totally against it. Look at wide receiver. I just want to see. Javon Baker. That's. I'm a Baker guy. It's not bad value. It's not. I mean, he's, he's the fifth rate ranked player. He's here at 111. I mean, I. I personally think that at this point you got to go ahead and uh, I would go probably. I feel like you, I, I feel like just in case. Yeah. I'll let Ace you make this. Overs here too. Do you, do you, do you want to give up on Jeremy Ruckert? No, I don't want to take another Ohio State. Yeah. That's a good point. There you go. Uh, uh, I, you uh, know what? I want, I'm scoring points. I'm going Javon Baker. I'll let you make this. Piece. MTS, congratulations. I just found out that you are the spoiler account of Hawk. Great, great job, buddy. 
We're scoring the points, folks. There you go. Johnny Wilson was also a name I, I see a lot of Jet fans like. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a fan. I'm a, Jacob I'm Cowling. Yeah, this, there were some still good receivers here, but this is our last crack at it because we traded away our other fourth to move up in the round two. There was a guy, there's a guy in the comment section talking about Malik Washington. I agree with you. I like Malik Washington a lot. Um, I, I think that he's pretty solid player. I actually, I actually thought it was kind of a shame that he didn't get any more, com he didn't get any mentions for the Blitnikoff, how well he played for Virginia this past year. This is the, I, I apologize to the fans. This is the slowest mock draft simulator I've ever seen. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're back. We took Baker. Continue the draft. Let's go. Our next pick is the sixth round. Oh, I would go running. I would go running back here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. If you want to go running back, just continue to build that offense. Let's see who's available. One eighty-five is our next pick. Let's see. You're getting close. I think. I don't know. I don't know. You're at 170. Never mind. I didn't even know that. Sixth round is now underway, folks. And we own our Mr. Irrelevant picks. Okay. Go to running back. Let's see. RB. Where's our running back? Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, Kamani Vidal's here. I know. And I love Kamani Vidal. I that's the, love that's the pick Vidal. done. All right. You don't want to have a conversation. You don't want to have a conversation with the guy who's apparently last name. I say wrong all the time. No. I all right. That's not. fine. Okay. Right. If you can't tell, I'm pretty much mock draft out the, at this stage. I, I can kind of tell Jacob. I know I'm not, not even close yet, but that's just me. I would appreciate ESPN having a faster simulator, but I guess not. All right, here we go. We got two picks left. They're back to back. Almost Mr. Irrelevant and then Mr. Irrelevant. The Jets' last two picks. What do you want to do for Mr. Irrelevant? A quarterback? Oh, it's got to be a quarterback. I say, you just want to, you just want to wait? Okay. Now we're on the clock. Best player available here. What do you think? Ooh, okay. Malik Mustafa still is there, and you need and I you need safety depth. I would do it. I do it. that. That's that's incredible value if he's there yeah, that he, long. He's the one hundred and forty. What is this guy like a murderer? Why is he? Why is he still here? I have no idea. He 20. he had such a good pro day. His pro day numbers were through the freaking roof. I texted a buddy of mine who went there and said this guy has probably gained at least two rounds. He yeah, is here. He is in round six. Yeah. Wow, Taylor X is a good point. Yeah, Ronaldo Green's not going to make it around six. You're right. He's not. Neither is probably Mustafa. So I'm going to take that pick and just call it a freaking day. All right, that's our pick there. And here we go. Last two picks. Round seven. What do you Okay, what do you want to do now? Do you want to go defensive line? Do you want to go? They're just best player available. All right. How do you feel about Jordan Jefferson? Because he does feel a need as well. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, I wouldn't so, hate it. These are the quarterbacks we're going to be looking at, by the way. Uh, Well, I'm definitely not taking... I already know who I'm going to take, so that's pretty much safe. Uh, okay, no. Go to, go to defensive line. Just see who else is available. Logan Lee, uh, yeah, just go Jordan Jefferson. The pick is in, and folks, oh, what the hell? That was our last pick. That's what? Right. We have ESPN doesn't even have the Jets two seventh round picks in, in their system. Okay, well, I was gonna take the UTEP quarterback because I'm not taking Spencer Sanders and I'm not taking Talia Tungabailoa. So, all right, well, well we have well we have to sign up as a UDFA right away. Is, all right, there we go. Uh, 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 sir, this is Joe Douglas. Yes. They, they, how, how, how are we doing? How are we doing, Joe? How are we All doing? right, let's recap. Here's how we did. We went to Dunze at 10. We went Kingsley Suomatia in the second round. We traded up for him. The Jets love him. Had him in for a top 30 visit. He's our tackle depth. Javon Baker, Kamani Vidal, 
Malik Mustafa, and Jordan Jefferson. How'd we do, folks? Rome Riders, rise up. Tremendous. I give it a solid B+. Plus. Here's the thing. No one's really going to care. No one's really going to care in, in, until you see it on the field. You see it all the time. People were crapping on Detroit last year. Detroit had the second best draft class. Sorry. Happens. Tremendous. It's crazy. What a mock draft. Cole, the next time we talk, the New York Jets will be in the midst of a draft that could define the franchise. Uh, it's going to be one that has to. I mean, it's going to be the one to define Joe Douglas's era. That's for damn sure. Rome Riders, rise up, says Sham. That's right. I love it. I love it. Not love to you, be Taylor. Confused with Sham. Love you, Taylor. Sham. Miss you, buddy. Miss you, buddy. Come on in. Now, you know, I'm still here. I still got another 12 minutes before I got to run. You can call in at any moment. I'm waiting. He, he's not calling in. Of course he's not. Why would he? He's scared. Matias nails it. Let's go, Islanders. Jets afterburners. Go, Knicks. Hell yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you to everyone who tuned in to the show today. Check out the one from earlier if you want my reaction to Joe Douglas's press conference. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, Joe Blewett from JetsXFactor.com will be doing a live film review on Brock Eugene Bowers. So, Bauer boys, you better bring it as Blewett's going to give you a true breakdown on his strengths, weaknesses, and whether or not he makes sense for the New York Jets with the number 10 pick in the draft. Before we leave, Snowball wants to know, Cole, can I get a frozen strawberry margarita? I'm on it. I'm on it. I got to go back to my day job. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You know, <laughs> see, I, I take I take breaks. I probably have been fired from the barina that I work at. So, you know, may, maybe you guys can help me pay some bills. And if you want to help me pay some bills, go ahead and subscribe to my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. We talk college football every single day over on that platform. You can follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. And I also am doing a partnership right now when it comes to SEC football. So, Anybody that loves the SEC, you can also go to SEC Unfiltered. I do content over there, talk college football every single day. Love it. It's a good time. MTS, I'm going to miss you forever, buddy. Bye-bye. Paul says, this show is brought to you by Jordan Harris. That's right. Today's sponsor, Jordan Harris. Appreciate you, my man. Thank, thank you again for Appreciate your service. You. That was awesome. All right. He's Cole Thompson. My name is Jake Asman. Folks, this was a ton of fun. Make sure you guys continue to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back tomorrow with a show, and that's going to be a lot of fun talking about Brock Bowers with Joe Blewett, who I think is right up there with anyone as far as breaking down film. Thanks again to Cole for joining us throughout the offseason. He's back as part of our Megacast next week. I end today's show by saying J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 and Knobel or bust. This was you after you fell off the scooter. I mean, this is what you look like. It's a pretty good representation. I didn't see you fall off the scooter. I just saw the aftermath of what you look like post-scooter fall. I was gorgeous. I always was. Another uh, caller on the line here that wants to talk to Cole. Cole Thompson has called in. Hello, Cole. Wait, what? Hey, Jake. What's up, fake Cole? You guys are so wrong on almost everything today. First off, I don't understand why Gator unsubscribed to my YouTube channel again. That guy is killing my damn algorithm. Also, I'm running out of Hawaiian shirts to wear, so may have to break out the belly shirt soon. <laughs> hey, fake Cole, let me ask you a draft question. How many times a day do you use the word sailor? A lot, actually. You know this, Don't get Cole. smart with me, fake Cole. Your last mock draft crash like you zipping around on a scooter at the Combine. Gotta hand it to you, though. You are growing up fast. Pretty soon, that mustache might even grow enough to connect with your chin hair. On that day, we will celebrate with a two-gallon bucket of Copper John's Beard Retention Cream. It will be a glorious day. Anyway, got to get to my scooter riding lessons. Three more months and I get my license. See you guys later and tell Gator to suck it. Thanks, fake Cole. Thanks, Cole. We're going to...